These poems were spoken spontaneously in Persian eight centuries ago by Jalaluddin Rumi as part of the work he was doing with a dervish learning community. The work of which was to open the heart and to explore that mystery they called union and to celebrate the glory and the indignity of being in a human incarnation. <laughs> so that was good work. <laughs> and uh, Rumi lived in an ecstatic world where he says just to be sentient, just to be conscious and in a form was cause for rapture. Form itself expounded the Dharma. Uh, he says, Every now and then I, I know that. Uh, so here uh, are some quatrains of Rumi um, put with the Bach. So we got Rumi and Bach together. It's almost enough. <laughs> Today, like every other day, we wake up empty and frightened. Don't open the door to the study and begin, begin reading. Don't go straight to the New York Times. <laughs> Take down a musical instrument. Let the beauty we love be what we do. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. Which is worth more? A crowd of thousands or your own genuine solitude? A little while alone in your room will prove more valuable than anything else that could ever be given you. I am the soul in a hundred thousand bodies. What is the soul? What is a body? I am both and there is someone else I am as well. In order to please that one, I put on various personalities. I say my lines. That sounds so true, doesn't it? <laughs> to me, anyway. What is a body? What is a soul? I am both. And there is someone else I am as well. I put on various personalities, I say my lines. There is a light seed grain inside. You fill it with yourself or it dies. I'm caught in this curling energy. Your hair Whoever is calm and sensible is insane. <laughs> I'm caught in this curling energy. Your hair, whoever is calm and sensible is insane. So much for Norman Vincent Peale. <laughs> 
I, I am so small. I am so small, I can barely be seen. How can this great love be inside me? That's the big question. How can this great love be inside me? Look at your eyes. This is the answer. Look at your eyes. They're small, but they see enormous things. They see the whole night sky. Keep walking, though there's no place to get to. Don't try to see through the distances. That's not for human beings. Move within, but don't move the way fear makes you move. Rumi felt that there was a core of longing in every human being. Um, nobody knows what that core is longing for. Probably not real estate. <laughs> or your own radio program. Uh, <clears throat> Here's a poem about that longing in which he says the longing is for the longing itself. One night a man was crying Allah 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 His lips grew sweet with the praising Until a cynic said so I have heard you calling out But have you ever gotten any response? The man had no answer for that He quit praying and fell into a, a confused sleep where he dreamed he saw Hitter, the guide of souls, in a thick green foliage. Why did you stop praising? Why did you stop praising? Because I never heard anything back. This longing you express is the return message. The grief you cry out from draws you toward union, your pure sadness. That wants help is the secret cup. Your pure sadness that wants help yeah, is the secret cup. That's Christian chalice. Listen to the moan of a dog. Listen to the moan of a dog for its master. That whining is the connection. There are love dogs no one knows the names of. Give your life to be one of them. There's a love dog right there. One night a man was crying. Allah. One night a woman was crying. Ah.
one of Rumi's metaphors for the psyche is that it's a guest house that you you are the and that you are not the emotions that come through that space you are not the compulsions the you are instead the empty space itself and the host so it's try to be a good host for all the guests that come through a, Jealousy might come through, and you say, so good to see you. I thought you were dead. <laughs> I haven't seen you in 10 years. Uh, or um, stage fright might come and say, well, it's good to have you back. It was kind of dull there. <laughs> Ecstatic love comes up the walk. My pleasure. Uh, a sentimental sense of oneness with everything. <sighs> I knew your mother. Hmm? <laughs> uh, a cynical doubt of anything spiritual comes. Bro, how about that game last night? <laughs> Unbelievable. We are now missing the L LSU Alabama game earlier. <laughs> 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 We've got to get our values straight. <laughs> um, road rage comes up. You say, have you ever thought of becoming a professional driver? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so those, that's my riff on Rumi's poem. Here's the poem itself. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for, who, for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. It's, that poem is loved by junior high school students <laughs> because they feel that very clearly. All these things that are flooding through me are not me. They know that. Yeah. This next poem I was reading one time <laughs> in Kabul, Afghanistan, in the Ministry of Culture. The, uh, in March of 2005, the um, State Department uh, decided that I needed to go to Afghanistan <laughs> and uh, celebrate the fact that the same poet is loved in the two countries, the United States and Afghanistan. So there I was in the Ministry of Culture. We don't have a Ministry of Culture, do we? Wonder why not. <laughs> Lawrence Ferlinghetti says, and when the power goes off, the America doesn't have any culture. <laughs> <laughs> so I was there, I was reading it, and I realized that everybody in the room was saying the poem along with me. They all knew this poem. And they got through, and there was a big argument. The minister, this little wiry man, jumped up, and they were just 
fiery. Was, I said, should I leave now? Is this not right? But uh, he said, no, this is very interesting. They're arguing about the metaphor of drunkenness in this uh, poem of Rumi's and the use of wine in Hafez. And uh, the, I say the minister jumped up and said something and I said, what did he say? It's, it some seemed to dissolve the argument. He said, inside this one roomy poem, there are 16 little drunken hafezes running around. <laughs> it was such a goofy image and, uh, <laughs> that it somehow made the, solve the argument. It, evidently, he meant that Rumi's, uh, Rumi's, uh, uh, love embraced all of Hafez's tweaking of the imams about uh, wine. So, here's the poem. We're going to do it with some blues. It's called translating it all the way over <laughs> to New Orleans. All day I think about it, then at night I say it. Where did I come from, and what am I supposed to be doing? I have no idea. My soul is from elsewhere, I'm sure of that, and I intend to end up there. This drunkenness began in some other tavern. When I get back around to that place, I'll be completely sober. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm like a bird from another continent sitting in this aviary. The day is coming when I fly off but who is it now in my ear who hears my voice? Who says words with my mouth? Who looks out with my eyes? What is the soul? I cannot stop asking. If I could taste one sip of an answer, could break out of this prison for drunks. I didn't come here of my own accord. I didn't come here of my own accord. No. And I can't leave that way. And I can't leave no that can. way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever brought me here, Who brought me here baby? will have to take me home. Please take me home now. I didn't come here. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, my own that's what the drunk always says. How did, where am I? What? How did I get here? I don't care. Whoever brought me out. Will I take, take me home take again? Me home. Kathleen. Uh -huh. Please take me home. Take me home. Get a call. Uh -huh. uh, whoever brought me here. Will have to take me home. You say, yeah. Whoever brought me here, take me home. Will have to take me home. Take me home. Take me home. Yeah, everybody sing it. Oh, we're gonna get it right now. Take me home. Take me home. This poetry. I never know what I'm going to say. I don't plan it. When I'm outside the saying of it, I get very quiet and rarely speak at all. Shams Tabriz, if you would show your face to me again, I could flee the imposition of this life.
I didn't know that last little thing was on there. Uh, but my translator in, uh, in uh, Kabul said it goes on a little bit. He said this little heartbreaking aside to Shams. If you would show your face to me again. I could flee the imposition of this life. Um, the beloved is a mystery that we can't talk about. Sometimes called the friend. It's that shared inwardness that Heraclitus calls fire. The Dalai Lama calls it radical simplicity. The Zen master Rinzai calls it silence or desolation. The homemade American mystic Joe Miller calls it headquarters. <laughs> you got to get back to headquarters, Coleman. Got to get back to headquarters, that, to, to that friend, the beloved. Sometimes Rumi addresses it directly and he uses, I'm told, a pronoun in Persian that means I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they, and God. But we don't have that in English, <laughs> so we have to make do with the heartbreaking, poignant, second person, singular and plural, you. It's pretty good, but we're trying to address that phenomenal substance within everybody that we share. That sometimes we feel it in the weather, in the light of early November. And uh, you, Rumi addresses it directly inside that. He says, when it's cold and raining, you are more beautiful. And the snow brings me even closer to your lips, the inner secret, that which was never born you. Are that freshness? And I am with you now. I can't explain the goings or the comings. You enter suddenly, and I am nowhere again inside the majesty. should have asked him that sooner. 